in this super advanced tutorial from the Russell Brown Show, I'm going to change. Yes, I'm going to change my colors like a chameleon would change their colors in the jungle. We're going to start with this camera raw image you see here and convert it into this illustration. We're going to do that combining smart objects with a great new plugin called Pixel Bender. Now, Pixel Bender does not ship with Photoshop CS5, so you must download it from the Adobe Labs website, and you see that address right here. Okay, here we go. I'm going to start with my original image here. Double clicking on this, I can reveal it here into Adobe Camera Raw. Right down here at the base, I'm going to click on this line of text to reveal my workflow options because I tend to work in the Pro Photo RGB workspace and in 16 bits per channel because I get a broader range of rich colors for an illustration like this. Now you know. Now what I'm going to do is go right down here and hover over Open Image. But I'm not going to click on Open Image because I want to open a smart object and smart objects is the future and you should be using smart objects because I do. And I'm holding down the shift key and it changes from open image to open object. I click and there it is, my smart object. I know it's a smart object because of this icon right there. I also know it's a smart object because if I double click on it, I can open it back up here into Adobe Camera Raw. I can make changes, for example, by moving the fill light over here to the right I can bring up my clarity, I can bring up my vibrance, just like that, and I can make some quick adjustments to this. Not to mention the fact that I like to slide my black slider over just a bit, especially when I use fill light, because fill light tends to flatten your image, and you can bring back the contrast with this black slider. Okay, so you see that, you click OK, and of course it makes a change. Now in this project, I'm working with two different smart objects. I'm going to combine them together and I'm going to run this pixel bender filter on them. To create a second copy of this top image and to make the second copy unique and not tied to the original, I go to the layers menu, down to smart objects and over to new smart object via copy. Did you see that? but you knew that already because you're an advanced user. In this particular case, my background has a softer value than my foreground, so I turn off the top layer's visibility, just like that, and select the bottom layer. Double-clicking on the bottom layer, I can go in and make adjustments to this. For example, in this case, I want to move the clarity all the way to the left, just like this dropping it to a minus 100. It's a great technique. I might want to go in and adjust the brightness a bit more or even the exposure to bring this up like this. And then I click OK. And I'm going to prove to you that these are two unique images because here's my background image and here's the visibility turned on for my foreground image, the detail I want in my chameleon. So two different layers. Okay, now's when the illustration portion begins using the new Pixel Bender feature. Turning off the visibility of my top layer, I target my second layer right here. Then going to my Filter menu, down to Pixel Bender, and over to Pixel Bender Gallery. And you can go in and add some of these really great effects by stylizing the image, by adjusting this slider, adjusting the cleanliness, and of course, move this all the way to the right, move it all the way to the left, and see the type of values you get. This is the value that I'm looking for more in this range, just like that. Colorization tends to bring up more contrast to your image as you move this slider. That looks great. Then you click OK. So you've then applied a non-destructive smart filter because when you apply a filter to a smart object, it is a smart filter. That's amazing. But wait, there's more. Because you can combine multiple filters together. We can go back up to our filters menu, back down here to blur, and over here to, for example, radial blur. 
I can apply a zoom method here, good quality, bring my zoom up, click OK, and it's now going to combine a zoom blur with my oil paint. Now here's something to point out. Notice that the order is important here. I want the oil paint filter to happen last. So I click on oil paint right here, move it up, drop it. It then changes the order so the blur comes first and then the oil paint. Cool. Okay, now we're going to jump into the future. I'm going to jump right over here to my finished results right here. And we're going to analyze how I put this all together. So let's turn off this top layer right here. So here's this bottom layer, the one that we added the oil paint and the radial blur to it. We changed the order so that the blur came first and then the oil paint. And we have our image right here. Then we added our second layer right here. Turning the visibility on for that layer reveals my sharp detail to my chameleon here in the foreground. I achieved that with a layer mask. And of course, since you're an advanced user, you know that I created this layer mask by clicking on this icon here at the base of the Layers tabbed panel. And then of course I went in and painted into this mask to reveal the chameleon in the foreground. If I hold down the Option key on my Macintosh or the Alt key on my PC, I can click on the layer mask and you can see it right here. I'm going to click on it again to turn it back on just like that. And in fact, let's hold down the shift key and click on the layer mask that I created to turn it off so you can see. Here's my top image and here's my bottom image. And what I'm doing is just creating two smart objects, right? That are affected by these smart filters and I blend them together with shift key, click on the layer mask to combine them together with this layer mask, painting between them. Now the moral of the story here is that you can always go back in to the smart object camera raw images at any time by double clicking on them just like that, adjust your settings, and then update it back to your image. So that's the real magic of working with camera raw images and smart filters to create an illustration like this. You were warned that this was an advanced tutorial and I moved pretty quickly. If you want to know more details about working with this new Pixel Bender feature, be sure and watch my basic Pixel Bender tutorial that you can find on my website or on my CD. There you go. Give this technique a try.